Hello, lovely learners. Welcome back to A Life Learned. So I have yet another very sensitive subject I wanted to chat with you guys about. But before I get into it, I just wanted to mention that I will be doing yet another Active Green video to contribute to my Active Green playlist, which I'll be talking more in detail about at the end of the video. So stick around to learn more about how you can contribute to that. So getting into the subject at hand. First, I wanted to mention for anyone who's new to the channel, I'm not trans or lesbian. I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm still currently just exploring my sexuality as a result of having gone through a lot of abuse and really just feeling able to approach it in the last six months or so. And um, I'm quite positive that I'm not trans. I'm pretty sure I'm not lesbian. I might be bi, but I think I'm pretty sure I'm straight just with a little bit of gray in there, like anyone really. Um, but I did realize last night while I was falling asleep, because my brain likes to go a little weird paths when I'm falling asleep, um, that I've always been quite afraid of ever approaching the idea of being lesbian or trans or anything of the like. And just having that realization was very interesting to me because I've never had any necessarily predominant negative input about it. I've not had um, anyone who was gay or trans or um, lesbian around me who was condemned for it or who was, you know, put down. My family never made comment about people's sexuality. If anything, they were very open-minded about a race and sexuality and stuff like that. So it, there isn't really a clear indication to me, a, a clear person in my family or my upbringing that gave me the message that it was a wrong thing. But regardless of that, I can recall through my various childhood experiences of exploring, you know, the self and, and who am I and um, what am I, etc. Starting to wonder, you know, why do I feel disconnects with myself? I'm pretty sure now it was a result of my trauma, but not knowing then what was going on, I would come upon the curiosity of, uh, am I actually a boy or another person? And as soon as that idea would come close to entering my mind, I would immediately be like, nope, <clears throat> not approaching it, not touching it, don't, nope, 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 not even possible, nope, 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 no. no. <laughs> and um, in the brief period where I was doing some sexual development, um, between when I was being, uh, I guess you could say, well, molested and raped, because I was molested from five to 10 and then I was raped from 14 to 20 so in that time period in between where I was doing some actual personal a little bit of personal growth I also whenever I came upon the concept or the opportunity to explore was I interested in the same gender as myself I would just be like no do not want to not even going to touch on it subject is a big fat no <laughs> and I just think it's a really interesting reflection on society when you think about the fact that I never had any predominant voices saying that that was bad, but yet I still very much had it in my head that I did not want to approach that. I do feel like growing up poor had something to do with it because I was already quite discriminated against for my poverty and um, approaching the idea of being yet another unacceptable minority. Um, was not something I, I think I was interested in exploring <laughs> when it came to almost anything. Um, well, at the same time, I was quite fine to stand out and be angry with my punk gear, um, so different approaches, but I didn't want to be uh, I guess it's just this extra level of condemnation that came with it in my mind that I was just like, I won't even touch on the subject. And I think that's pretty sad. I mean, it's it's a different time today. Like, people aren't quite like that. We're not perfect yet either. But people are a lot more accepting of 
you know, the, the grayscale of sexuality um, than they were back in the 90s, which is when I was growing up. But I just think it's still a really interesting reflection on society that I had that ingrained fear to not even want to touch on it at all. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not a person who really has much experience with this. I'm currently working on exploring my sexuality after working on recovering from my abuse. Um, it's been a big part of my healing and over the last six months I've done a lot of exploring and I've still got a ways to go. Um, so I can't really offer advice for anyone who might have been searching this subject. Um, but I would advise if you're looking for further anything on it, um, to check out Steph Senyati. I will put her channel down below. She has been transitioning for about three, I want to say three years, two and some, three years or so. Um, I've been following her since, but around the time she realized that, um, excuse me, that she was trans. And she's been offering a lot of supportive videos and a lot of educational videos through sharing her transition and <clears throat> just sharing information about the experience and the community and sexuality in general. So if you have further questions, I definitely suggest going to check her out. Um, and you know, there's lots of people in the community, I'm sure you know about them, but explore the community. It's very much worth a look and there's a lot of education within it. Um, and otherwise, with regard to my other playlist um, that I was talking about at the beginning, on April 22nd, it is Earth Day, for those who aren't aware. Every April 22nd is Earth Day, future reference. <laughs> and um, so, ever since I started my channel, I have been doing a playlist in which I try to find something that I can change in my life to be more environmentally friendly, and I make a video educating about it, as well as other things that other people can do. And with that, I like to offer you guys the opportunity to join me and to uh, pick something that is simple and small and hardly affects your life at all, but affects the planet. A really good example of this is the one that I did last year in which I changed from using disposable paper towels to using, um, what, how do you say, rewashable paper towels. So I have napkins basically now that I put in the washer and I don't buy paper towels anymore. And it was a very, very small change but considering the amount of bacon I eat, it was quite a big change in terms of the impact that I have as an individual. And doing random acts of green is very much just about being the change you want to see and doing those small acts because all these small acts add up to a big change. And so with that, I, I want you to understand it's not about making a huge sacrifice, but just finding something simple, something simple and small that you can change in your life just to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Even something as simple as just starting to carry a bag with you so if you see garbage you can pick it up once in a while. Really simple stuff. Changing from disposable water bottles to re reusable. Just all kinds of stuff. You can find it in the playlist that I will put below. There's all kinds of different ideas that I've shared <clears throat> in my videos and other people have shared in their videos. And, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I want to encourage you with that if you're up for it, to either blog or make your own video about the act of green that you do. And then tag it, random act of green 2018, I think, yes, that's the year we're in. And um, I will add it to the playlist. And otherwise, just know that your impact, no matter how small, really can make a huge difference because it's all of our individual impacts that is adding up to the environmental devastation we're dealing with, right? So that means that it's going to take each and every one of us making changes, even if small, to eventually get to a much more sustainable way of living. So I do hope you will join me in making a video for April 22nd. Again, that's uh, two Sundays, three Sundays from now, a couple weeks from now. And um, have a very happy Earth Day. And otherwise, as always, do join me again next week or sometime soon where I try again to share a little something I've learned or experienced in life.